everyone. This is Sarah Romke. I'm a systems archivist for Artifactual Systems, and I'm here today with Dan Glayen, the product manager for Atom. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar, especially since uh, this is the second webinar of the day. Um, and uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a uh, brief introduction to Adam and what Adam is all about, and then we'll move on to a demonstration. So I'm going to pass it on to uh, Dan, and he will take it from here. Hi, all. So a quick look at our agenda for today. First, we're going to give you a quick run through about what exactly Atom is, covering some of its major features, functionality, and development history. Then we'll take a look at the search and browse of the main entity types in Atom. After that, we'll log into the application and we'll show you how to create and edit content of some of the major entity types, including archival descriptions, archival institutions, authority records, subjects and places. After that, I'm going to pass the presentation back over to Sarah. She'll show you the accessions module, as well as some of our administrative settings for managing Atom. If we have time, we'll get over to looking at how to manage some of the menu nodes. And we'll finish off by showing you a few examples of themed Atom sites that are currently being used in production. Throughout the presentation, if you have questions, feel free to enter them into the chat window. We're going to try to address all the questions at the end in a 15 minute question period. So we'll keep an eye on this chat window throughout. So what is Atom? Atom stands for Access to Memory. It's a web-based open source application for standards-based archival description and access in a multilingual, multi-repository environment. We're going to quickly unpack what each of those things means. As a web-based application, this creates a low barrier for your public users. All that they'll need is an internet connection and a web browser to access your Atom installation. The application was originally developed as a LAMP architecture application. That is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. These days we're using Nginx for our web server, but everything in our stack is open source. Because it's open source, this means all our code base and all the dependent libraries in it are free to use, free for you to download, study, modify, share with others, and even offer your own services in relation to. Atom is a community-driven project. Artifactual here are the lead developers, but we like to think of the entire community as owning the application. To help support this community of users, Artifactual maintains several resources. If you go to our access to memory.org website, you'll find comprehensive documentation available free of charge. This includes a user manual for everything that can be done through the user interface, including everything we'll cover today, and an administrator's manual, which covers installation, maintenance, upgrades, customization, command line tools, and more. To help support discussion, share user stories, troubleshoot problems, and put other users who might want to develop features in touch with each other, we also maintain a public user forum. This is currently labeled the IC Atom Users Forum based on our early name, and we've kept the name the same for now. The applications are the same over time. We've just rebranded with the 2.0 release. We also have an IRC channel where we invite developers to drop in and chat with us. Our channel is Open Archives. You can find links to all these resources on our access to memory.org website. Our software is developed in what's normally called community driven development. Artifactual has developed the application, but as I said, we like to think of it as community owned. Our business model at Artifactual is sometimes called the bounty model of open source. In general, we as a company offer additional paid services such as hosting, theming, training, data migrations, and custom development. But the code base, the user form, and the documentation are all available free of charge. 
whenever Artifactual does any custom developments, we generalize these and include these in a future public release. Therefore, when one individual or institution sponsors a feature, the entire community benefits. We also love working with the community and community developers. If you are developing a customization of Atom in your local institution, and you think that would be of benefit to the broader community, we love pull requests. We have some information on our website about how to submit pull requests to Adam via our GitHub page. Whenever possible, incorporate these pull requests into the next public release. This takes the maintenance burden off of an in individual institution who's customized their application and makes sure that the entire community can benefit from the efforts of any single individual or institution. Adam was developed to help encourage standards-based description and access. Our approach to that in the application has been to prepare easy-to-use standards-based content edit templates. These are based on international and national standards for uh, content standards. Currently, we support the ICA's ICAD-G, the American DAC standard, the Canadian Rules for Archival Description, as well as Dublin Core and MODS for describing resources. Our authority records are based on the ICA's ISAR CPF standard, and our archival institutions are based on the ICA's ISDA standard. We also have a functions module, which we won't cover today, but this uh, is based on the ISDF standard, also maintained by the ICA. In Atom, it's easy to change between content standards. Demonstrated on the left there is a description that's been described using our ISAD-G cont uh, content standard template. With a single click of a button, you can switch this to any of the other templates. Atom maintains internal crosswalks that will map data from each field to its corresponding field where possible in the other data entry templates. On the right there, you can see the same description flipped to a Dublin Core template. We'll show you how to do this once we get into the application. Atom is also a multilingual application. We have a broad and dedicated community of volunteer translators who work with us to help provide translations for our user interface via TransFX, a third-party service that we're using that offers a, a user-friendly interface for doing translations. We merged the most recent translations provided by our volunteer translation community into each public release. In addition to this, it's easy to translate your content in Atom simply by flipping the description template to another language or culture, entering edit mode, and entering a translation. Atom also includes a localized translation bar so that you can make custom edits and translations to the user interface elements to customize them for your local needs. Atom has also been designed as a multi-repository application. This means that the application can be used as a union catalog or portal site for many institutions holding records. As of Atom 2, we've also included the ability for institutions to customize their archival institution description pages. You can add custom background colors, upload logos and banners, and even add custom HTML and inline CSS to your page to help customize it. Again, we'll show you some of the basis of this once we get into the application. Finally, Atom offers integration with another open source project that has been developed and maintained by Artifactual, Archivematica. Archivematica is an open source tool to manage digital preservation workflows and create archival information packages for long-term preservation. From these, you can generate digital um, dips, <laughs> sorry, which are uh, digital image reference copies of these and upload these into Atom for further description and display. We'll be offering another webinar on Archivematica in the near future. 
And we'll have details on that at the end of the session. So let's get started now. All right. Can someone confirm for me in chat that you can all see the home page of our Atom application now? Great. Thank you, everybody. So this is what the standard home page in an Atom application looks like. The content here in white can be easily edited through the user interface. You can customize the messages that appear. We'll show you that once we log into the application. Currently, we've just thrown some default content in here, similar to our demo site, which is available at demo.accesstomemory.org. So if you'd like to try out some of the things we covered today, you can always go to our demo site and try it there. We include the login details for that, just like this, on the demo site's homepage. On the sidebar here, you'll notice that we have some, a browse menu. This will allow your users to quickly get to all the main entity types in Atom. You'll have the same browse menu available here in the Atom header bar wherever you go in the application. These menu nodes can be customized. Hopefully we'll have time to get to that and we'll show you quickly how that can be done at the end of this session. You'll also notice that we have this popular this week widget. This widget will display the top 10 most popular results based on number of visits for archival institutions, authority records, and archival descriptions. Search bar up here will allow you to search across the application. It also includes an autocomplete feature. As you type, related results organized by entity type here will appear in the dropdown. When there are more results than available in the first three, you'll see an option to go to a page that shows all matching descriptions. Over here on the right, we have the language menu. You can quickly switch the interface between languages by clicking these. You can also manage what languages appear in your application and in your language menu via the settings menu which we'll show you later on. Finally, we have the Quick Links menu. The Atom homepage is kind of a customized, what we call a static page. However, you can create as many static pages as you want and then add them to this menu for easy access. So if you want to just create a page that describes to your users how to search or perform advanced search or what kind of holdings they can expect, you can create those kind of pages and add them here. Here's an example page. Let's go look at the archival descriptions browse page now. In Atom 2.1, when you first land on the archival description browse page, you'll see a mix of results from all levels here. In Atom 2.2, our next release, which we're preparing for some time later this spring, there's actually a top-level description filter that will be available. It will be turned on uh, by default in browse pages and turned off by default on search pages. Users can quickly toggle in between them. For now, however, I have what are known as facet filters over here. Using these facets, I can quickly filter my results see what I want. So if I only want to see font descriptions, I can simply click on this filter and it will quickly limit my results to font level descriptions. You can remove this at any time simply by clicking all again. Similarly, we also include a quick way for users to see digital object content that is uploaded, images, text, or what have you. 
By clicking this, I can quickly limit results to those that have digital objects attached. This can be quickly removed again by just removing what we call the filter tag here. Pagers provided for more results down at the bottom, and the number of results on a page can be customized by administrative users through the user interface in the settings. We also have some sort options over here. The default for both anonymous or not logged in users, as well as logged in or authenticated users can be set in the settings as well. Right now we have it set to sort by the most recent edited or created records for both anonymous and authenticated users. Now let's go to the Archival Institutions Browse page. Currently we have our application set up as a multi-repository environment. So we've added descriptions from many different institutions here. In Atom 2, the Archival Institution Browse page includes a tile-based feature where users can upload logos. When there's no logo present, the name of the archives will appear on the card instead. These results can also quickly be sorted and faceted based on the facet filters on the side. Finally, we include a dedicated search bar for the archival institutions, which will search the whole record. And like other pages, we have sort options available over here. Now we'll quickly look at the Authority Record Browse page. Authority records in Atom are based on the ICA's ISAR CPF standard. And as such, you can sort the results based on ISAR's entity type. We also have a dedicated search here. And sort options. Finally, I'll quickly show you the subjects browse. This is very similar to how places are organized in Atom as well. When first arriving on the page, you're given the option to browse all of the listed subjects, and see a count of results. You can sort those and search them. And the search options also include the ability to search by all labels, the authorized form of name of the term, or any alternate labels that have been added. When we click on a subject term that has been related to archival descriptions, those descriptions are presented directly below. And further facets are provided for users. The search bar remains available. If there are translations of the subject term, you can also easily flip the interface to see those results in French or whatever cultures are present. So let's log into the application now and see a little more about adding and ed editing content. So I've logged in here while I'm still in the same page. As you can see, more options immediately become available. I can edit this term directly. I can add alternate labels, 
scope notes, source notes, and I can also relate this to other terms in a hierarchical fashion. We're not going to spend too much time today on subject terms. I just wanted to show you the edit template available. So let's take a look at some of the options available in the main menu now that we've logged in. You'll notice that new nodes have appeared here. We've logged in today as administrators. That is, the account has all the privileges available in Atom. There are different user groups available in Atom, and the permissions on these can be customized. By default, we include a contributor role who can add records but not edit main entity types, an editor role that has add edit privileges but no administrative capabilities, and the administrator role. There is, of course, also the anonymous role, that is, users who are not logged in. Those permissions can be customized too. We won't go into that much today, but all of that can be done through the admin menu by either managing individual users or the group that they've been added to. The add menu here covers the main entity types that your contributors will be using to add records. The manage menu has other entity types that contributors may not have access to, such as donor records, physical storage, or managing the taxonomies. We have import options for both XML and CSV. And finally, the admin tab, which is available only to the administrator's accounts, allows us to customize the application and set certain settings in place. Let's look at creating some entities in Atom now. We're going to start today by quickly creating an archival institution. When you first open an edit template, it appears with all the sections closed like this. These areas are drawn directly from the related ICA standard, in this case the IC standard. It can be easily opened and collapsed by clicking on them. Atom does not enforce any requirements on how many fields you add or do not add. However, required fields in the standard have been marked with asterisks. If you do not add the required information, Atom will still allow you to save the record, but it will provide a warning to your users afterwards. These warnings are only visible to authenticated users. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Let's create a quick record here. We can add entity types. These types will appear in the facets, as you saw on the browse page. We can add multiple types as well. We add a type that we don't want, we simply hover over it, click it out. We can add contact information, including multiple contacts, and designate one as primary or not. I'm going to skip that for now. History, administrative structure, opening hours. All of these fields can be quickly drag and drop to make more space as you need it. So now let's just keep our record very simple. So as you can see, the ISDS standard indicates that contact information is a mandatory element. So we've got a little warning up here. Our public users will never see this, but this is a way to remind users about uh, maintaining adherence to the standards that Atom is based on. We've got links here that will take you to more information on our wiki. Administrators will also see this widget over here in the corner, which allows them to control the upload limit for related digital objects linked to this repository. This can easily be edited by administrators. We can set this to unlimited for now, or we can disable uploads entirely.
Let's quickly theme this institution. We simply down here in what we call our button block, click the edit theme button. Adam will give you the ability to set a unique background color, upload a banner or a logo, as well as add custom HTML or inline CSS content to your page. For now, just to be quick, let's just pick a custom background color. Now, any descriptions that have been related to this archival institution will also bear this same background color, as well as the link to the institution itself. This helps identify different sources of archival descriptions in a multi-repository environment. I'll show you that a little more once we've linked some records together. Now we'll quickly create an authority record. Once again, we have our different areas of description based on the standard and required fields indicated. The history field here is where biographical or administrative histories for your actors in your record will appear in archival descriptions. Whatever is added to this field when an authority record is linked to an archival description is imported into the description itself for display. So we'll see the content show up once we've created an archival description to link all of this together. You also have the ability to relate authority records to other authority records and define how that relationship works and relate it to other descriptions. There are many workflows for relating it to archival descriptions. We're going to go about this another way. So for now, let's just create this record. So there's our minimal description for Bunny McGee. Finally, let's tie it all together by creating an archival description. Currently in our application, in our settings, our default edit template has been set to use ISAG, the International Council on Archives, description standard for archival descriptions. It's easy in Atom, however, to customize this on a per description or even per level of description basis. Here we can quickly switch the template once we save it to any one of these. We can also decide if that will affect its children or not. I'll show you this once we've created a description. Let's create one in iPad first. Adam's dates here, these are the display dates. In the start and end dates, we use ISO controlled fields. So we can add a little more customization to this if we want, and our users won't see this. This allows us to add um, typographical symbols and whatnot necessary here to express uncertainty or approximation. So we could say, for example, something like this. All of the drop-down menus in Adam's edit templates contain terms that are included in a taxonomy in Adam. All taxonomies in Adam are customizable. That is, terms can be edited or deleted and new terms can be added. 
So, for example, in this menu, if there are levels of, uh, levels of description that are not in use in your local environment, you can easily delete them from the system. And if there are levels of description that you use that are not included in our standard terms, you are free to add them. This is true for all drop-down menus in the application. Adam also includes this widget for quickly adding lower-level stub records if you're working on the fly. Let's add a child record for this. Now let's link this record to our other existing records. Adam includes in its edit templates several autocomplete fields where we can tie uh, our descriptions to authority records. As you begin to type, the results will narrow and we can select the entities that we want. We could do this multiple times if we want. Finally, we have publication status here. The publication status allows you to determine whether or not these records are viewable to your public users, that is, those who are not logged into the application. You can set the default publication status for the entire application in the settings menu. However, you can customize it for each description or even each level of description here. Let's make this one published at the moment so that public users can see this record. And now we'll create it. So now we've linked this to our new archival institution record, and therefore it's taken on the theming from that institution. We also have a way to get to that archival institution record simply by clicking on the logo placeholder here. We've also linked it to our authority record. As you can see, the biographical history for our authority record has appeared in the description. Through that quick add menu in the edit template, we've also created a stub record for a lower level of description here. We can click on this to navigate, and here we are at the lower level. Following the content standards, um, to reduce the uh, repetition of information, certain things will be inherited from other levels. So the name of the creator, for example, does not need to be added to lower levels of description. If, for some reason, I have a different creator at a lower level, I can simply go into my edit template and add a new creator. Similarly, the repository has been inherited from the upper level of description. So this is available at all levels. So finally, let's show you quickly how to link a digital object to this. Down here in the button block, we simply click on the More menu, and we have several options. If I wanted to add multiple digital objects at the same time as lower levels of description, I could do so here. For now, let's just link one digital object to this description. We have the option to either link this to a web-accessible resource or to upload locally. For now, we're going to upload locally. And there is our photo of Bunny McGee. Adam, when digital objects are uploaded into Adam, Adam will automatically create derivatives. That is, it will create a reference display copy, which you're seeing here from the master, which is available if you click on this. 
and a thumbnail for use in search and browse results. Each of these can be edited individually simply by coming back down here and going to edit digital object. So if I wanted to replace this thumbnail with my own thumbnail, I could simply delete this one and upload a new one. I think at this point I'm going to turn it over to Sarah so she can quickly show you guys our accessions module and some of the administrative features in Atom. Hi everyone, this is Sarah. Um, so uh, let's create an accession record and uh, we'll create one uh, brand new and we'll suppose to ourselves that it's related to this description that we just created. So as a, a logged in user, you can create an accession record by clicking add and then accession record. This brings up a, a template that allows you to enter information about your accession. A couple of things are filled in by default. First is the accession number. As you can see, when I hover over this um, field, I'm unable to edit it. And that's because it's set in the administrative settings, which I will show you a little later. Um, and it automatically creates a unique number for each accession that you create. It's filled in today's date as the acquisition date, but we could change that if we wanted to. Um, say the acquisition actually came in yesterday, we could change that. We can enter uh, numerous fields of information about our accession. So we might say where we got the accession from. You might give location information. In the donor and transferring body area, you can enter um, a record for the donor, including their contact information. I'm going to skip that for now, just to save a little time. In the administrative area, you can choose an acquisition type, such as a gift, a resource type, such as a, a private or a public transfer. You can give your accession a title. And you can also add creators. This is a autofill field. When I start typing, um, I get results that are already in the database, or I can create a new creator that's not already there. In this case, I've chosen the same creator that Dan just created for his archival description. I can give information about the scope and content, the physical condition, how many units you received, one box of records perhaps, you can set up a processing status as complete, incomplete, or in progress. Give it a priority of processing. And add any other notes about processing that you want to add. There's also a template to add a, a record of the rights associated with the accession. This is based on the premise standard. Uh, it's not something that we're, we'll go into detail about today, but if there's interest, it could potentially be the subject of a future webinar. Finally, at the bottom, there's an archival description area where if we start typing, we can get autocomplete results from the database. So here we see the bunny cookie phone, and we can associate this accession record with that particular archival description. We could also associate it with other archival descriptions if uh, the accession related to more than one description. I'm going to click Create, and this will create our accession record. So as you can see, there's a link to the creator. This links to the authority record that Dan created. And there's also a link to the uh, phone record that we just created as well, to the archival description. If I click on that archival description to bring us back to the Bunny McGee home, at the bottom, you can see an accession area has been added. And now there's a link back to that accession record. This is only visible if you're logged in. Your public users will never see your accession records nor will they see this accession area. You can also access your accession records through the Manage menu, which is just beside the Add menu. If I click on Accessions, we can see a whole list of all of the accessions in the database. And we can also create accession, uh, a new accession record, or we can create an archival description from an existing accession record. So if I click on this accession and click on Create Archival Description, 
then it creates a brand new archival description based on the information in that accession record. I can then click edit and add more information based on the descriptive template that we're using and so on. You'll notice that again, the accession area in the archival description is also uh, filled out with a link back to the, the accession record that it was created from. There are several other uh, functionalities in the accessions module in Atom, including uh, deaccessioning and adding accruals, but we won't go through those today just to save some time. I'd like to show you some of the admin, uh, administrative options that might be of interest to you. This uh, menu uh, that Dan pointed out earlier is the admin, admin menu. You can tell from the gears, that's this icon, and it's only accessible to administrators in your database. So editors and contributors would not normally be able to access this unless you've changed those settings yourself. I'm going to go to the global settings page, which has many of the settings that affect functionality and display across the Atom database, and just point out a few um, settings that might be of interest to you. You can either scroll down the page or you can navigate through this menu along the left hand side. So if I click on default page elements, for example, it gives us the option to, to show the logo or the title or the site description for uh, the database. So we could uncheck the logo, click save, and now you'll see there's no logo up in, in the top right hand corner. We could, however, add a title if we wanted to. So we could call this um, site archives and make the title visible. I didn't save my site title the first time. And now you can see that the site title has changed up in the upper left corner. Um, in the global settings near the top, this is where you can change your accession mask. So if you remember when we were looking at the accession enter template, um, there was a um, there was a, a, an accession number that was created automatically. This is where that information comes from. So if there's something that's standard in your institution, such as um, you know accession uh, and then some identifier for your institution, you can change that there. Further down the settings page, under default template, this is where you can choose your description template to be used across the database. So you could choose, for example, DAX or RAD or Dublin Core. We've had it set to ISAD-G throughout this presentation. You can also set the default, the uh, template per description. Um, that's something we didn't have a chance to show you in this demonstration, but you're not necessarily tied to one descriptive template across the entire database. And here under user interface labels, you can also change um, how your users see the labels. So for example, um, some institutions prefer not to use authority records. They prefer to use um, a more sort of everyday phrase like people and organizations. So that's what your users would see in place of authority records when they're browsing archival descriptions, for example. So I'm going to um, just very quickly touch on the subject of menus. That's another option under the administrative menu. And here we have a list of all of the potential menus in Atom, including the add menu, groups, the quick links menu that we pointed out in the beginning of the demonstration, as well as browse. I'll quickly use browse as a um, as an example here. So suppose you didn't want your users to be able to browse archival institutions for some reason. You could click on that menu. You could delete it. It asks if you're sure because you can't undo this action, although you can always add the menu back in later by creating it brand new. And you click delete. And now when we go to browse, you'll see there's no longer a browse option for archival institutions. That's just one example of an easy way that you can customize your Atom database. There's many, many more options like that. And that's the kind of thing, again, that 
we could consider uh, doing an entire webinar on easy ways to customize your Atom database. If you give us some feedback about the kinds of things you'd like to hear about, um, that'll really help us uh, plan new webinars in the future. So before we open it up for questions, I'm just going to quickly show you a few examples of um, Atom sites that are used in other places that have had their own institutional themes made uh, for them or they've made them themselves. So this first example that I've brought up is the Beaton Institute uh, in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And you can see um, you can see that there's many elements of an Atom database. You can see the browse um, menu here. You can see the browse along the side. You can see um, the search bar, search for Sydney, Cape Breton. Um, but it, they very much have their own institutional flavor, which they've given via a background image and a different font and so on. Another uh, great example of a themed Atom site is Alberta on Record, which is a portal site for archival institutions across the province of Alberta, Canada. And again, you can see that they've given their Atom database their own um, sort of flavor by using, oh, sorry, sorry about the tone in there, <laughs> by using their own uh, fonts and icons and so on. Um, if we browse archival descriptions, again, you can see all of the Atom functionality is there, um, but they've given it their own look. And then finally, I just want to show one more example. This is a, um, an Atom site from a university library from the uh, University of British Columbia from their Rare Books and Special Collections division. And as you can see, they've used, um, they've made their own template where Atom is contained within this uh, middle section of the uh, page, but um, they have an institutional requirement to use certain elements at the top and at the bottom. So in this case, they've done some, um, they've made a custom uh, WordPress template to, in order to do this. Um, but that's the kind of thing that, we, that we've seen users of Atom use out there. So we just wanted to give you a little bit of inspiration for those of you who are thinking about doing similar things. So I'll just go back to our demo site here, and uh, we haven't seen any questions come in uh, throughout the presentation, but if you'd like to uh, ask some questions now, we're happy to answer them to the best of our abilities. So um, now we're ready to take some questions, and there have been some questions coming in, so we'll start with the ones that uh, came in sort of in the order that they came in. Some of them were related to one another, so hopefully we can, um, you know, answer several at one time. Um, so first, I want to address the question of whether um, you're limited to just one uh, descriptive standard for the entire database. Um, as Dan showed when he was creating a new archival description, you are not. So we, I, we changed, uh, I showed you in the settings how you can change it for across the database. But then suppose you have one collection where you want to use a different descriptive setting. You can easily do that. Um, by changing the descriptive uh, template, first we have to go into edit mode, and then an administration here. So here we can change the description, the descriptive standard for this description only, but we can also make that selection the default for, um, for uh, children of the description. So if we click save here, I've just changed this description to Dublin Core. So you could suppose that maybe you have a photograph collection uh, and you have existing Dublin Core metadata that you want to use instead of RAD or DAX or ISAD. Um, you could make just that collection use that descriptive standard. Uh, there were several questions about restricting access to the public. Um, I'll address them all sort of at once. The way that you keep descriptions uh, private from the public in Atom is to leave them in draft mode. That's the current method of uh, doing this anyway. And uh, what this means is that the public will not be able to search for those records that are in draft. They won't be able to see them. Um, you can make authenticated user accounts uh, for people to have login access so that they can see those draft descriptions, but, um, but not be able to add new descriptions or edit descriptions. So, for example, you may have a researcher who signed an agreement to say that they're allowed to see certain things that other people can't see. Um, you could make a login account just for them and, and they could see what is in draft. 
you can get really granular with those permissions so you can make it per collection per institution and so on um, an upcoming feature in Atom 2.2 will be the ability to create a premise rights record and make that uh, record take action on your digital objects. So for example, you might say to yourself, our institution wants to restrict any digital objects that are under copyright. As long as you've created a copyright, um, an under copyright record for uh, those particular digital objects for the descriptions associated with those digital objects, you'll be able to restrict them across the database. So that'll be another way of um, allowing access to the description, but not allowing access to the digital object. Um, Dan's been keeping an eye on, on questions that have come in the meantime. Is there anything you'd like to address, Dan, or that I should address? Um, I just wanted to, so there was a question about embedding links to a finding aid. Um, again, that's something that you can do. You can definitely put H, uh, HTML links in. However, one thing to be aware of is the fact is that that might affect your exports um, if you're actually using HTML. Just pasting a link in is fine, but if you're actually using HTML to style it in the template, that might affect the XML export because that uh, is not what the XML is expecting. However, um, this is another place to talk about a new feature that will be coming in Atom 2.2. Atom 2.2 will have the ability to generate a full PDF or rich text format finding aid based on your archival descriptions. So I could make a multi-level description such as the Buddy McGee font here and then I could click a button and generate a full PDF finding aid for all levels of description and make that available to my end users. At this time for 2.2, this feature has only been developed for the Canadian Rules for Archival Description template, but we hope in the near future to adapt that to the ISAT and DAX templates as well. Can the system generate a reference copy of a digital object from a storage location outside of Atom, such as through an HTTP link? Absolutely. That is one of the things that we can do. So if I actually wanted to create, well, okay, this is actually in our thing, but um, let's go to another description quickly. When we link a digital object here, we also have the option to input uh, a URL right here. The only important criteria here is that your URL needs to actually end in the file extension. So, you know, .tiff, .jpg, whatever, .ping, whatever the format it is, you need to get to the URL specifically when you're viewing an object like this, for example, where it ends in .jpg. If so, then you can put it in and Adam will import the same metadata. So let's try this quickly. Here I have a cat ending in JPEG. There we are. Now, as you can see, some digital object metadata is maintained. However, there was another question about metadata, other metadata. So descriptive metadata, if you were linking to uh, another system, such as Content VM or somewhere else, descriptive metadata will not be automatically imported when you link to a digital object from another system. That's an interesting possible feature, but that would require integration with that system, I think, or a way of passing the metadata. While we're on, uh, remain on the subject of um, digital objects and linking them, I see a question about what if the, the link doesn't end in the file extension? That wouldn't, well, you wouldn't be able to, to enter a digital object URL that doesn't end in the file extension.
How do you change the accession format if you're using Atom for a multi-repository setting? So this has been a tricky one for us right now and uh, something that would require development to really do. Uh, at this point in time, the accession module was designed during an earlier phase of Atom's development and has been built assuming that it will be used for a single repository setting. In general, when the multi-repository functionality was built into Atom, it was assumed that that would be used as a sort of portal site where other institutions had their own descriptive systems and were passing them to a portal site or union catalog for public access. Um, when that was originally developed, it was imagined that likely archivists would not want their internal accession data intermingled in a system based on public access. So at this time, unless you're all willing to share the accessions module, there's not a way to separate out accessions by a repository. Can you link one accession to multiple phone? Yes, you can. You absolutely can. You can link it to as many phone as you like. You can also add accruals. Uh, you can deaccession those. It might be relevant to you to be able to add um, add links to different um, like series, for example, within one phone. You may have an accession that relates particularly to a couple of series within your phone, and that would be another use case where you could make use of that uh, functionality. You can also do the inverse and relate multiple accessions to one description. Um, I'm assuming you don't have to publish an accession record for public view, even if you have it linked to a description. So at this point, the accessions module records are not available to the public. They don't have the same draft or publish mode. Uh, right now, the assumption is, is that accession records are for internal use only. So for an accession to be viewable to the public, you would actually have to transform it into an archival description and then publish that description first. If you have a link on your description uh, back to an originating accession, that is not visible to the public either. That's only visible to authenticated or logged in users. And I think we'll take the time um, just for one, the one last question that I see um, has come in the chat related to digital objects. And that's um, how does Adam handle linking multi-page digital objects uh, in like a one-to-many environment? So uh, you can absolutely upload a multi-page digital object, such as a PDF file. You can do that in one of two ways. You can have uh, the PDF file um, uploaded to a single description or you can change your settings so that when you upload something like a PDF, it will uh, create an item level uh, description for each page within the PDF. Dan is, uh, is uh, manning the, the uh, mouse right now and he's showing where you change that setting in your administration setting. The other thing to show you quickly too is you have the ability to actually multiply import multiple digital objects at once. So in Atom, there is always a one-to-one -one relationship between an information object or a description and a digital object. However, if you want to import multiple digital objects at once, what Atom will do is it will generate stub lower level records. So here I'm on a phone. I can set a default title, which is here. This would appear as image 01, image 02. I can set a level of description for what those will come in as. And then I can select multiple files. We don't have a, a bunch of digital objects available, but Adam will generate a preview and allow you to edit the title individually and then import them all at once. Then you can go to the description and you'll see that it's created them all as child records of this phone. And you can then edit and supplement them individually. Import XML. What kinds of XML? Thanks, Martin. Um, at this point, for import, we support EAD 2002 as well as Dublin Core XML. Uh, with Atom 2.2, we'll also be adding the ability to import mods XML.
Any other questions? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> On the subject of import, um, for those who are maybe interested in CSV import, um, we provide a CSV template that you can use to, in order to successfully import uh, descriptions into Atom. Uh, there's another good question. Uh, what would be the best way to get data from one Atom instance to another? That's a great question. There's several possibilities there. Yeah. And that's something that we're still working on as we go forward. Atom has grown significantly over the last few years, and we're currently working with the Canadian Council on Archives to set it up to be Archives Canada, the next Canadian national portal. So moving descriptions from one Atom to an instance to another will be a challenge that we'll be looking at. At this point, I would say the best way to do that is probably through XML export. Um, it depends. If it's a one-to-one -one Atom database thing, then you could actually do a SQL dump and move it. Um, MySQL, the database used in the back end, is quite friendly that way, and we've done that internally to help data migration projects. Um, we do support on our authority records. We also support EAC XML, so EAC CPF is sort of a a sibling XML standard that was developed and is now being maintained by the SAA for um, authority records. So you could get out your authority records and your archival descriptions that way. Um, thanks to the way that most um, EAD works, a lot of the additional information is contained within your EAD XML. So for example, the linked information about our repository would appear in the EAD here. And when that would be re-imported into Atom, this would create, for example, a stub authority record for our, um, our actor here, as well as the stub uh, repository record. We do not at this time have CSV export, but that's something that we hope that perhaps our user community can help us develop in the future. We see that as being a great way to get data out and in. Um, similarly, Atom does have the ability to expose records via the OAI PMH protocol. So if you have another application that can harvest records in that format, you can do that. At this point in time, Atom does not have the ability to act as a harvester, however. But that's also functionality we'd like to see develop in the future. While we're waiting to see if there's any other questions, one more thing I thought I'd show you guys quickly here is uh, the themes page. For users who develop their own custom themes, you can always load them here and then switch them easily. We include one theme here, the Archives Canada theme, as a way to sort of show users and help developers who want to make a custom theme throughout the application. So the code is there as a reference. Simply switch it, click Save, and the application will switch look and feel. You can see we've included a customized home page here for reference. So there's a question about the upload limit um, for uh, uploading digital objects and whether that's limited to two megabytes. Um, that can be altered, I believe, but through code. Um, not through the there are, there are several places where this can be altered in Atom. Um, for one, we already showed you the ability to customize that per institution. Also here in the edit template, you can set a default upload limit per institution. And finally, there is um, a configuration uh, file called the YAML file that you can access in Atom um, through the command line, so something that a system administrator would do that maintains certain uh, default limits. All of this is documented on our site. I'll show you quickly here. So 
So for example, right here, you can set uh, in the um, configs apps.yaml file, you can set a global upload limit for the application, as well as control download timeout limits and whatnot. So I see another question about if we're using 1.3 and want to go to 2.x, what's the best method of migration? Well, our documentation here includes an upgrading guide, and this can be followed actually upgrading from earlier versions. If you're using an earlier version than 1.1, uh, then we suggest upgrading to the latest IC Atom release. If you're currently using 1.3 and you want to upgrade to 2.x, you should be able to follow this guide. And there's a question about um, creating reports. Um, and there's a number of different um, kinds of reports that can be viewed. When, I'm assuming that would be a report of archival description. Um, so if we go to the home page and we look at some archival description, Um, here we have a, a reports button where you can uh, create a report that is a file list or an item list. Um, at, because we're logged in right now, we can also see that we can make a report of uh, physical storage locations or make uh, a CSV of box labels. Um, these are the currently available reports. In a future version of Atom, hopefully the next version to be released later this spring, we're also going to include a feature um, where if you're using the rules for archival description template, you can make a, a PDF or an RTF uh, version of a finding aid. So you can create like a full uh, you know, printer-friendly PDF uh, inventory of an archival description. I'm not sure if it's exactly the kind of report that you're looking to create, um, but it's uh, those are the current reporting options in Atom. The other thing that you can do here that administrators have access to is the description of uplift dates template. And this will allow an administrator to see recent action in the application. So we can see, for example, here that the Bunny McGee phone was created, this lower level description was created, and the succession was created. And it tells us when and what repository that was related to. We can search this by record type whether it was created, revised, or whether we want results from both, and whether we want to see all descriptions or those that are draft or those that are public. We'd love to see this developed further in the future to be a much more useful tool for administrators who are interested in reporting functionality. There are a few other reporting elements throughout the application. Um, we won't get to all of them, but for example, you do have the ability to perform a search and then have a print-friendly results ready here. Um, there's also the ability to produce some reports about physical storage locations as well, if you're adding those to your descriptions. Reporting is definitely something that we would love to improve over time with the application. So hearing about what the priorities are in our user community definitely helps us. Um, I'll just repeat again at this point that if there's anyone who doesn't have a question that they get to ask today, or if they want to follow up on any topic we've covered today, we invite you to make a post in our user forum, which is available here. We have everything from general questions to technical questions from developers working with the application to people who've run into problems and want help troubleshooting them. There's really no question that we don't well, so please feel free to come and just say hello. Are there any other questions? So again, I would encourage you guys to take a look as well at our website where you'll find all these resources. It's at accesstomemory.org. We've been working really hard on rewriting all our documentation here. And everything that we've covered today will basically be in these first three sections, overview, getting started, and add edit content. 
We've also covered just a little bit of the administer section as well. We're constantly working on improving these documents and adding more to them. We've included a detailed glossary for any terms that we use to help clarify things throughout. Uh, and we welcome pull requests on our documentation as well. We have more information about them and how you can contribute to them here. So thank you very much for your time today, guys. And if you have anything else you'd like covered, come say hi to us in the user forum. Thank you all. Have a great day. Oh, we've got one, one last question. question. <laughs> okay, we'll try to cover there. this one. Does Adam allow direct copy and paste into Word for report purposes? Um, you know, I have to admit, I've never tried just copying and pasting straight off an Adam View template and into Word. I imagine there would probably be some formatting particularities you'd have to clean up. Um, so I'm not sure. I encourage you to experiment with that and let us know how it goes. Um, we have done some cleanup work in our 2.2 release on the printing functionality. So when you print stuff, the header information and the menus and all that won't be included anymore. So you might want to go to the print preview option, especially in our new release, where you'll get a much cleaner sort of uh, printout um, that's printer friendly, and that might copy better into a Word document. Um, with the 2.2 feature, uh, that we'll be adding for generating finding aids, one of the format options will be rich text format. So you could generate an entire uh, multi-level description as a rich text format document, which is a format that Word supports. So uh, if you're interested in being able to pull descriptions out of Atom and edit them in a, a, an application such as Word, then uh, I suggest waiting and checking out the exciting features coming in Atom 2.2. I think we'll conclude, conclude it there. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for attending, and I hope you have a nice day. Thanks.